In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a witch hat for Halloween, quick and easy. Yeah, I'm going to get right into it here. So we're going to want to start by going into Roblox Studio. We're going to go delete this. You don't need to do that. You're going to go to plugins, rig build, and block rig. That should be default in plugins. This installed the, the kind of like build rig thing. And then go on the dummy, go to the properties here, and then go to the origin position type 0, 3, 0. And there, and it, sh it should go to the middle. And then go into the Explorer, right click on the dummy, export selection. Export this to your computer. Remember where you save it, that is going to be important. Now we'll come back to Blender and we're going to go File, Import, Wavefront OBJ. Locate in your files where you saved your dummy. Mine's here and you'll have two files. Whatever the file name you saved as, I, I saved it as dummy. You'll have dummy OBJ and dummy MTL. You want to make sure you double click the OBJ and that will now import your noob. If you want your blender to look like mine, as you can see, I've got some like nice white edges. Basically, you want to go, normally it'll be on studio, change studio to flat. And also I like to have, instead of material, I like to use texture. This basically means that you can see a texture through, even in solid mode. Usually you'd have to go into the material mode to see a texture, it's all glitchy. But then, yeah, we're gonna go like this. You also wanna make sure you have cavity on and shadow on. Having cavity and shadow on, Basically just makes everything look a bit nice, a bit of shadow, and then also a little bit of like a white glow on the edges. If your computer is bad, this might lag it. If it starts to lag, just use default settings. It doesn't make a difference to your final product. And if you go and press one on your keyboard to go into front view, if your dummy isn't looking at you, you can just do R, Z, and that'll rotate it on the Z axis. I'm just gonna type 180 to rotate 180 degrees. And there we go, well, time is ready to start. I'm gonna go press one on my number pad here and go into the front view. I'm gonna do shift A, mesh, and add a cylinder. Now I'm gonna to go to the little arrow up here and type 16 on a 16 vert cylinder, and then do G, Z to move up. I'm gonna do S, Z to squish it down, something like that. I'm gonna go and move it down a bit. And I'm gonna go into edit mode with tap. I'm also gonna use alt and click to select this loop and then press S to scale. I see this like scales it down nicely. And then I'm gonna quickly just go and move with G. Then R to kind of move it a bit like this. And then we'll do E, S, and G. I'm just going to rotate it a bit like R. There we go. As you can see, we're starting to get the shape together. I'm going to press E again, S again, and then G. I'm also going to press R here. As you see, this doesn't look too detailed, but the shape is starting to come together. And yeah, let's go like this. So I'm going to go and extrude one more time up here. E, S, G, R. I'm going to add a loop cut. Control R, and then scroll up once and then left click right click and it adds these loops i'm now going to alt click this loop like alt and click and then s g r and just kind of keep following this loop around something like this looks really good i'd say and there you're starting to get the shape together i'm going to add one yeah, i'm going to move this loop down i'm going to move this loop down like that and then i'm going to make this like this i think that looks that looks better now i'm going to do edit mode a to select everything face shade smooth and we'll go out of edit mode and go to object data properties and then go to this normals tab and tick auto smooth i'm going to change the number to 50 i like 50 more than the default 30 and then as you can see we're starting to get the shape together now i'm going to go here i'm going to alt click the bottom one and then do i go somewhere like that g and z and then press e and then s something like that you can see it has this inside of the hat now now i'm going to go and press um the seven key on my number pad to go into the top view and then go tab z to go into wireframe i'm going to select these vertices here you can select any around just these like little like the bottom ones and then i'm going to go up here to this dot click it and go into proportional editing mode and i'm going to do g to move it if you scroll down it'll make the area smaller we scroll up. Scroll up makes the area smaller than it affects, and scrolling up makes the area bigger. So you can see here, I can kind of like move this around a bit to kind of create a cool shape for my uh, hat to kind of like create it, you know, more squished in areas or stretched in areas. Maybe go something like this. And honestly, that's looking good now. I like how the way that that's kind of like turning around. And then I'm going to go to select these bottom, these top ones. I'm going to do R to kind of like curve it a bit more, something like this. And then I'm also going to do it from this view kind of create this like that as you see if i'm using r and g with this proportional editing it creates this like curvy look now you could call this a witch hat this could be a witch's hat however i want to add a little belt i'm going to go here into edit mode i'm going to add a loop with Control r left click and i'm going to move it up a bit somewhere around there now i'm going to go into face mode up here there's like a little face select mode i'm going to do alt and click this loop as you can see we've got all these faces selected i'm going to do alt e 
and then extrude faces along normals. And this kind of obviously extrudes it. It looks really cool. So actually, we've kind of got a band there now on our witch's hat. And you can also make more details. You know, you can go here and use go back to vertice mode, go to Z, a wireframe, and then like rip it with a V key. The V key creates a rip like that. You could create rips like this and then like fill in the holes. And something like that could look cool. You may even want to do it by instead of ripping like this, you could create a loop cut and then do that same underneath. Am I doing this now? If you rip it, it doesn't rip the entire thing. It just creates a little nice cut where you want it. As you see here, that's a really cool little rip. Uh, might want to make it bigger as well. Something like that. As you see, it's got like a nice cut in there. And you can do the same round the back or wherever you want it. If I go something like this, I think. Yeah, I'm going to keep just two little cuts in there. Just because that's what I think looks good. If you want to do a buckle, I'm going to show you a quick way to do a buckle. You can just go to Shift A mesh and then cube um do gz to move it up it's also do s to make it smaller i'm gonna go into side view with the number three key s y to squish and then i'm gonna go into edit mode with tab s x and i'm also gonna go into z to wireframe mode highlight these corners i'm gonna do Control b then scroll up a few times to create like a nice detailed bevel i'm gonna go to this number and round it up to 0.7 looks good and then go to highlight this corner Control B, 0.7. Go to this corner, Control B, 0.7. This corner, Control B, 0.7. Just like that. Now I'm going to go out of wireframe mode and I'm going to change this to face mode. Select this face and set the same face on the other side. And then press I. And then I'm going to go around there and then I'm going to do delete and then faces. As you see now, that kind of creates like a cool buckle look. But we need to fill this in. So I'm going to do Alt and click and then Shift, Alt, click and Control E, bridge edge loops. As you see, that kind of bridges them which is pretty cool. It's a really helpful trick to know. And that's like a buckle in a way. So I can go S to scale this. And then I'm going to do three to go into the side view here. I'm going to kind of like use G and R to move this around to fit the thing. I'm going to use, also scale it a bit. I think having it scaled like that looks good. I'm going to also shade this smooth quickly. I do like how that is starting to look. I'm going to quickly go like this. I'm going to select this face and then do E. And then... Scale Z, but if I press Z twice, it kind of kind of scales along the side axis that we want it to. And I would say that this hat is starting to look more or less complete. You can add as many details as you would want to this hat. You can have more than this. You could have some potions hanging. You could add more rips. You could make this thing tall. You could go like zoom and make a really tall witch's hat. Not that you would want a tall witch's hat. But basically, this is just a simple way to make a nice detailed witch's hat. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Really quick one, if you want to learn how to texture this item, I'll put a tutorial on screen now. So watch that if you want to learn how to texture your UGC item. But yeah, anyway, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Please leave a like and subscribe.